Vehicular ad hoc networks, also known as VANETs, are basis of next generation of intelligent transportation systems. They are a subset of mobile ad hoc networks. They aim to provide inter-vehicle communication and roadside-to-vehicle communication to create safer and more efficient roads by providing accurate and timely information to drivers and road authorities. VANES aims to support a wide range of applications, including but not limited to road and safety applications such as traffic congestion notifications, emergency notifications, peer-to-peer -peer communication for sharing content, commercial applications for advertising and fuel pricing, road transport applications such as toll payments and road usage. A traditional model of a van scenario would include multiple vehicles connected to each other using radio frequency bandwidths, whilst vehicles near intersections potentially also would connect to a, a fixed roadside unit, also known as an RSU. The RSU would in turn be connected to vehicles in the area as well as connecting back to various server architectures for potential location-based services and traffic monitoring services. Vanis presents many challenges that do not exist in regular wired or wireless network scenarios. The topology of Vanit will need to accommodate for a high mobility of nodes within the network. The network topology would be ever-changing yet also predictable to some extent. The size of the network would only be limited by the protocol implementation and the physical distance of the nodes or their electronic transmitting strengths. The network would also have to work in a real-time environment with time-sensitive data exchange. This presents various challenges such as the integrity of security and privacy of this data. The security and integration of the, this network is vital for all members using it. When data within the network is compromised, the whole system suffers. The nature of the system requires privacy to be built in at every level. There are various security challenges that will need to be overcome before a, before a successful implementation can be made. Some of the information being transmitted will be time sensitive and potentially life saving. This information must have a very low transmission overhead, less than 100 milliseconds delay, and at the same time use fast cryptographic algorithms such that the message maintains authentication, non-repudiation, privacy, data consistency, and fault tolerance for errors. Attackers on a VANET system can be varied ranging from insiders or outsiders. Insiders are authenticated users and outsiders are unauthenticated users. Um, malicious or rational. Malicious attackers look to harm the functionality of the system, whilst rational attackers have personal profit and hence possibly more predictable. Or lastly, active or passive. Active attackers generate signals or packets which could leave traces, whilst passive attackers only view the traffic generated. Due to the nature of bandits, they are very susceptible to different types of attack. The following attacks are currently possible and future implementation of bandit protocols would need to address them. Impersonation, session hijacking, identity revealing, location tracking, repudiation, eavesdropping, denial of service including jamming, sin flooding, distributed denial of service. There are also various routing attacks, including black hole attack, which is when the attacker entices the other nodes to keep sending data to itself and silently drops all the packets. Wormhole attack, which is when the attacker entices the other nodes to keep sending data to itself and retransmit it somewhere else. Gray hole attack, similar to black hole attacks, but the attacker only drops selective packets. The first related work we would like to discuss is VARS, which stands for Vehicular Ad Hoc Networks Reputation System. This is a project that was done by a group of BMW researchers in Germany in 2005. The main concept is the reputation system, which uses three different ways to handle opinions or reputation. One, direct opinion handling. As a node sends a message to its peers, each receiving node makes their own opinion whether a source node is correct or not, and append their opinion to the message. This is called opinion piggybacking. The receiving node then forwards the appended message to their next node or nodes. Two, indirect opinion handling. 
If a node is unable to verify such an event, it will have to trust the appended message from the nodes that can verify the message directly. This is a transitive trust property. The determining whether the message is trusted or not is based on a threshold given by the area. This is known as geo or situation oriented reputation levels. 3. Opinion generation. An opinion is generated based on the message received. If it is a direct message from the source, it will fall under the direct opinion handling. However, if the node cannot verify an event itself, it will have to rely on other nodes. This will fall under indirect opinion handling. If it is neither, it will be a partial opinion. In the end, a decision is made based on the overall opinions and the geo slash situation oriented reputation levels. It is the application's responsibility to inform the users or potentially take necessary actions. So one of the issues we see is that it seems to us to be a very inefficient way to communicate. We can also see an issue when a node with a good reputation suddenly turns malicious or malfunction. Other nodes will then trust this malicious or malfunction node when they perhaps shouldn't. There is generally few similarities between wars and our anchor paper. Our anchor paper is describing a more modern system that facilitates for a wider spectrum of scenarios and requirements. In 2007, some researchers proposed a system called AMOBA. This system was proposed to overcome the privacy concerns in previous Vanity designs. The AMOBA scheme primarily enhances privacy using the following three properties. 1. Use of silent period to provide unlinkability between locations in vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle applications. A mobile proposes the use of silent periods, which is random intervals between each broadcast message. On top of that, each vehicle may change their pseudonym, making it hard to create profiles. 2. Use of group concept to extend silent period in vehicle to infrastructure applications. Vehicles are driving in a smaller network known as a group. The group communicate internally while the group leader, which is selected randomly, is responsible to communicate with the RSUs, or roadside units. 3. Leveraging group to provide unlinkability between vehicle location and location-based services application. On th top of the previous techniques, AMOBA suggests a location-based service should change the order of packets, but also change the content slightly. This makes it harder to track and profile users. We believe that the main issue of such a system has flaws, since it would be very difficult for law enforcement authorities to get access to user information. Additionally, we fail to see how a MOBA would stand malicious or malfunctions users in the system. Uh, compared to our paper, uh, there are some similarities, such as the group infrastructure, um, and also both papers seem to really care and consider privacy. A journal paper released in 2013, published in Network Security and its application, highlights various application characteristics, challenges, security issues, security requirements, potential attack vectors, and their proposed solutions. They have proposed various solutions as follows. Authenticated routing for ad hoc networks. Proposes a secure routing protocol for ad hoc networks based on authentications. Aaron would use a public key infrastructure and require a CA whose public key would be known to all nodes. This system provides authentication, non-repudiation services using predetermined cryptographic certificates. Secure and efficient ad hoc distance vector proposes a design based on the destination sequence distance vector routing protocol. SEAD has the capability to support limited CPU processing and protects from DOS attacks in which the attacker attempts to consume excess network bandwidth. It uses a one-way hash function rather than a public key infrastructure and its symmetric operations. It uses destination sequence number to avoid routing loops and protects from replay attacks. Secure message transmission is a lightweight system which requires security associations between source and destination. It does not use cryptographic operations at intermediate nodes.
The source uses existing route discovery protocols to determine the initial active path set for communication. The source uses existing route discovery protocols to determine the initial active path set for communication. The source then sends out the data into a number of pieces and encodes it across different routes. Each piece carries a MAC which is used to check the integrity and authenticity of its origin. Non-disclosure method is to protect location information in mobile IP. This method also uses a public key infrastructure cryptographic system in which the sender sends the message to the received without disclosing any location information. Communication between the sender and the receiver is performed via independent security agents using public key infrastructure. Ariadne is a routing protocol that prevents attackers from learning the routes of uncompromised nodes and DOS attacks. It is based on on-demand routing like dynamic source routing and uses symmetric cryptography. The sender and receiver agree on two keys in which is used to authenticate the route request where a message containing unique data like timestamp calculates the MAC for a message. This system was proposed as there was a lack of vanity implementation that accounts for corruption by authorities. While the system still ensures traceability, it will also protect the user's privacy. By the time of writing, our anchor paper was only in the initial phase. This means that they were only working out the big picture elements and the concepts rather than the specific implementations. Due to this, there is a lack of experimentation and testing involved. The paper also makes use of threshold-based crypto system, which has been used in different contexts previously. However, it seems to be the first implementation of this crypto system in a vanet. This will be described later, as this is the main original ID described in this paper. It is suggested in the paper the use of pseudonym-based identities to minimize correlation between users and identities. Additionally, the paper proposes the use of user groups to further improve privacy. This has already been utilized and proposed in several Vanet implementations. The following properties is what the paper tries to achieve. Privacy, traceability, non-frameability, authentication, non-repudiation, message integration, and confidentiality where sensitive information is being exchanged. This system was proposed as there was a lack of Vanet implementation that accounts for corruption by authorities. While the system still ensures traceability, it will also protect the user's privacy. By the time of writing, our anchor paper was only in the initial phase. This means that they were only working out the big picture elements and the concepts rather than the specific implementations. Due to this, there is a lack of experimentation and testing involved. The paper also makes use of threshold-based crypto system, which has been used in different contexts previously. However, it seems to be the first implementation of this crypto system in a vanet. This will be described later, as this is the main original ID described in this paper. It is suggested in the paper the use of pseudonym-based identities to minimize correlation between users and identities. Additionally, the paper proposes the use of user groups to further improve privacy. This has already been utilized and proposed in several Vanet implementations. The following properties is what the paper tries to achieve. Privacy, traceability, non-frameability, authentication, non-repudiation, message integration, and confidentiality where sensitive information is being exchanged. The most original idea we found in this paper was the threshold-based crypto system. We would like to quickly summarize this. Simply explain, uh, the threshold-based crypto system is a system where you need to meet a certain threshold before you can decrypt the information. This means that out of n keys, we need k keys in order to get access to the information where n is greater than or equal to k. Each entity or authority will have their own key and K entities or authorities will need to agree before any information can be decrypted. If you try to decrypt the information with less than K keys, you will not get any inf useful information out. As mentioned previously, the paper aims to fulfill all favorable properties of a Vanity implementation. 
This includes difficulty for law enforcement authorities and other authorities to abuse their power to either get users' details or simply frame a user. These scenarios might be more relevant in some countries where corruption is a more relevant topic. This crypto system aims to limit the opportunity for corrupt authorities. The strengths in our anchor paper are the threshold-based crypto system and the pseudonym-based identities. The issues we can see is that if the public key generator is compromised, the whole user may be compromised. This paper does not address this problem. Or if a malicious user or malfunction vehicle tries to send the wrong packet data, the system will not do anything to prevent this from happening and may result in catastrophic events. Or if there are K-corrupt authorities, this whole system will be rendered useless. Vanis are the next generation of advanced intelligent transport systems. More and more applications seem to be interested in the use of vanets, including life-critical ones. In order to successfully implement a vanet, one will have to consider the following requirements, authentication, integrity, availability, confidentiality, and non-repudiation. Most research paper only aims to satisfy one of the requirements and address it in detail. Due to the nature and complexity of vanets, they will still require a lot more research and a holistic approach, taking into account both software and hardware restrictions. A significant amount of large-scale real-world testing will need to occur before deployment can be considered. This paper lacks any practical and concrete implementations or proposals, but rather works on the abstract, more theoretical level. The ideas in this paper is not revolutionary on, under any circumstances. After analyzing the proposals, we can see the certain issues that are left to be resolved. We would recommend this paper if it was modified to include more practical implementation or test case scenarios for the proposed systems. This is a crucial step for working toward automated transportation. Vanets in general seems like an interesting field that has picked up over the last few years. We are excited to see where this is going.